أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والحمد لله الذي لا يحمد على مكروه سواه والحمد لله كما هو أهله ثم الصلاة والسلام على البشير النذير والسراج المنير سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا المحمود الأحمد المصطفى الأمجد أب الزهراء محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته شجرة النبوة ومعدن الرسالة ومختلف الملائكة ولا سيما على بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته على الخلائق أجمعين إمامنا وولي نعمتنا وإمام زماننا الحجة بن الحسن فداه أرواح العالمين صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين الغر الميامين المنتجبين صلى الله عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة. For the hastening of the reappearance of the twelfth Imam, please recite aloud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. It was the third day of the month and it was the third year of the Prophet's migration and it was time for the third Imam to be born on the day on the third day of Sha'ban the year three after Hijrah the Prophet وسلم, has prayed his morning prayer probably doing the ta'qibat, twilight reflecting on the atmosphere, the luminance and the radiance of the sun. You could almost see the sun about to rise and there is another sun that is also about to come. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sitting towards the qibla when all of a sudden Archangel Jibra'il descends from the heavens. But this time, somewhat in a unique way. So Jibra'il comes very often to visit the Prophet. But this time, he's got company. Traditions tell us that along with Jibra'il, there was another 4,000 of the elites from the creation of the dominion, the angels. Jibra'il, along, along with 4,000 other angels. They come to give Rasulullah this good news 
the glad tidings. This coincides with Umm Salama coming to the Holy Prophet. In her hand, there was this newborn, the chosen newborn, the significant newborn. She comes with Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and hands him to his grandfather. Jibrail comes down, Umm Salama comes to the Holy Prophet. Rasulullah looks at his grandson and Jibra'il descends only to tell the Holy Prophet and to inform him of two major events. One, you have been gifted this unique newborn and his name has come along with him إِنَّهُ Hussein عَلَيْهِ salam. But also there is another rather sad news to this. So Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam opens his eyes and the eyes of the Holy Prophet as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi stares at the eyes of Imam Hussein alayhi salam all of a sudden he envisions two separate visions. He sees two or four sees two different realities related to Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. One, he sees this legend. He sees this legacy of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. He sees this one-of-a-kind inspiration for humanity to come, this ark of salvation, this lantern and the beacon of guidance for humanity, this man who, whoever wants to be guided in the right path and ends up in paradise, paradise needs to go through this man. But then like any parent and like any father or grandfather who when he is given a newborn or gifted a newborn would like to see the very last day of that newborn. How will this boy or girl will end up passing this world? What will happen next about the legacy? And all of a sudden, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi foresees a desert. A desert with tents, half burnt children running in that barren land. Woman screaming but with no voice. Aswatuha buhat wa hunna nawa'ihun. Bodies decapitated on the plains of Karbala and this newborn Hussein alayhi salam he is buried under rocks stones spears and arrows but decapitated beheaded the head of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam on a long spear the prophet looks at his at his grandson and he burst into tears. Umm Salama says, Ya Rasulullah, what's wrong? The Prophet points to his child and he says, it's because of him. Subhanallah, Ya Rasulullah, is there some sort of an ailment? Is he inflicted with an illness? Is there a problem with this child, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet said, no, no, Ya Umm Salama. So what's wrong with him? Ya Rasulullah, he's so glorious, he's so beautiful. So the, the Prophet wasallam said, Ya Umm Salama, let me tell you. But he only told her a glimpse of what will happen. Umm Salama cries, obviously. But then Rasulullah said, Umm Salama, beware of telling and disclosing this news that I have told you to his mother Fatima, she is in post labor, she cannot bear and handle this news that Jibra'il has told me. Now traditions tell us that when Jibra'il came, in this time he was very different, his situation, his appearance, he was crying, filled with sorrows and tears, along with the rest of the angels. <clears throat> Seven days pass. 
the Prophet وسلم, comes to the visit of his daughter Fatima to Zahra. Again, he takes his grand grandson Imam Hussein السلام, outside Medina when again uh, a limited number of angels they come to the Holy Prophet. No new news. They come with the exact sorrowful news to the Holy Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, we offer our condolences even before the time that Imam Hussein is even killed. Salamullah alayhi. And so the Prophet cries. But after, after this year, perhaps it was two years after the, the Imam's birth, Imam al-Sadiq, this is an authentic hadith, brothers and sisters. For those people who doubt and question, what are we doing? Why are we crying? Imam al-Sadiq, the sixth Imam says, لَمْ يَبْقَ مَلَكٌ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ You do know that among God's creation, there is nothing more created than the angels. Hadith tell us that every, in every inch in the heavens, there is an angel worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sixth Imam says that on that day, every angel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in the heavens, they descended and they offered the condolences and the aza to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then every year, mind-boggling brothers and sisters, every year on the birthday of Imam Hussein, the Prophet would sit down along with some of his companions, along with his household, they would weep over Imam Hussein, who is still alive at that time. Brothers and sisters, you've heard of the terms Sunni and Shia. Do you know what a Sunni means? They suggest that we follow the traditions and the way of life of the Holy Prophet. So any sect that emanates from the Sunnah is a Sunni. The Shias, however, they're not Sunnis. Why? Because they don't follow, according to them, the footsteps and the traditions and the way of life and the custom of the Holy Prophet. This is what happened and this debate took place between two erudites and two scholars, a Sunni and a Shia, the so-called Sunni and a Shia. One, Al-Allam Al-Amini, this illustrious scholar, may Allah be pleased with him. Allam Al-Amini, the author of the, this great uh, compilation of the traditions and the verses and the poetry in regards to Al-Ghadir, the event of Al-Ghadir, this great man traveled a lot. Back then, there is no internet. It's, it was very difficult to get access to books. He used to travel Palestine, Damascus, Iran, Iraq, Egypt, just to get his hands on these Sunni sources to derive and to extract the traditions that they have put in their own books in regards to Al-Ghadir, the event of Ghadir where Imam Ali was, appoint, was appointed by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his rightful successor. successor. But along these trips, he, he engaged into debates and dialogues with other sects. One of which was revolving around this very topic. So he sat down, perhaps it was in Egypt, Alexandria in Egypt, or it was in, in Palestine, or elsewhere, maybe in Damascus, or Amman. So they sat down with this scholar, Alam al-Amini, a number of Sunni scholars. They said that, what are you people? You so-called Shias. Where do you get your religion from? I mean, we try to remain with the Prophet Do exactly what he used to do. Because at the end of the time, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ You need to follow the footsteps of the Prophet No going left and right. Whatever he did, you try to implement. Your lifestyle needs to emanate and come from the lifestyle of the Holy Prophet you Shias, you do things that are totally unrelated to the Holy Prophet So he said, like what? They said, what you do in Muharram. Weeping, sitting, gathering, 
in these congregations and doing it year after year. You lament in this bizarre way. And obviously the Prophet wasn't post-Ashura alive to do these things. So Imam Hussein was killed a couple of decades after the Holy Prophet's demise. So you're doing something that you have invented from your own pockets. That's obvious. No question about that. We don't even need to, you know, debate this topic because you've, 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 you've invented your own religion, your own version of, the, of religion. Alam al-Amini was really a, 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 a true, illustrious scholar. He said that I will not debate from our books. I'll talk and I'll mention what you have brought to your scholars in their own reliable, based on your criteria, compilations and books. And so he starts mentioning these traditions that I aforementioned. What I just mentioned is all mentioned in Sunni sources. Even the hadith that says 12 angels, they descended, their eyes were filled with tears, their cheeks were red, they had their uh, wings to the ground as a sign of, 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 of sadness and sorrow and they came to the Prophet and all the angels they came descended to the, to the Prophet وآله, offering their heartfelt condolences. This is mentioned in their, in their books. And then he mentions uh, this, this tradition that every year the Prophet would sit down and he weeps over Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam until the very last day that my brother mentioned the Prophet in his last day in life. He came and he embraced his five or four year old grandson, Imam Hussein started weeping and weeping and weeping and saying Mali wali Yazid la'anallahu Yazid even before Yazid coming into this life Mali Yazid Mali wali Yazid what have I done to Yazid may Allah curse Yazid and then traditions tell us that Rasulullah he he embraced Imam Hussein and started kissing him but in rather special places that you would not find generally a person kissing his son or grandson in those positions he came he came and he kissed him on his thorax on his throat on his forehead he took off his clothes and he kissed him on his chest on that day fatima said ya rasulullah Abba, what are you doing why are you kissing frequently these special places he says he said I am kissing the places of the swords and the spears and the, and the arrows. Brothers and sisters, traditions tell us the best of, of, of deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes are the deeds that, you, that are emanated and you imitate from the Prophet's deed sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And I would like to draw your attention before I continue uh, on the top topic, Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Brothers and sisters, wa alayhi. There is two uh, sunnahs, if you like, that I would like to talk about and address very briefly, inshallah, tonight. One is prayer. We know that the prayer is considered religiously and the perspective from the perspective of Rasul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, as the pillar of religion. As salatu amududdin. If it is accepted, everything else comes along. And if it's nullified and gets rejected, everything is rejected. This is one of the most important sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. By the way, those who call themselves sunnahs the Prophet had said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray the way that you saw me praying. Now go search in their books. I'm not suggesting our books. When did Rasulullah put his hand on his stomach? When did Rasulullah prostrate on anything but ground and earth? Al ard wa ma nabata ala al ard. Go look, go do your search. Sunnah means imitating the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa That's one. 
The second sunnah, brothers and sisters, is getting married. Yesterday, I think, I was speaking to some dear brothers and we opened this topic of getting married. I know it's Muharram, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has, said it, has said it explicitly and vividly clear. And nikahu sunnati. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Getting married is my sunnah, is my tradition. With all due respect, you need to see what religion offers. You don't have to bring your own opinions in regards to anything. Music, this, that, getting married. Alhamdulillah, I want to commence on my studies. I want to do this. I want to work. I want to see what Allah has told you. See the sunnah of Rasulullah. Ahabbu al-a'mali ila Allah. Ittiba'u sunnah Following the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So sometimes we address this topic saying that if you've got fear of falling into sin, on this case it becomes an obligation. No question about this. Look at the decrees, look at the sharia, ah, look at the ahkam mentioned in the risala, so-called risala al-amaliyya, the book of decrees by the ulama. It's generally... Unless you fear falling into sin, which is really all-encompassing, especially nowadays. Who is infallible? If you've got fear, brothers and sisters, you need to get, at least try to get married and see what happens, what Allah has predestined for you. But apart from that, this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Before, you know, throwing your opinions left and right, go see what Allah wants from you. Go see the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Shiraru mawtaakum al-uzzab. The worst amongst you who die while they are bachelor. Al-Husayn al-Thaniyah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ala hubbi Fatima al-Zahra al-Thalithah bi-a'la aswatikum. So we'll go back a little bit. Crying over Hussein is the sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He cried before the Imam's martyrdom. Before the Imam's martyrdom. In fact, some traditions tell us that he wept over Hussein before the Imam's birth. So that's one of the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That's one. Two, see when they bring up, bring up these ahadith that they say, you know, Rasulullah said, Kitab Allah wa sunnati. It's not Kitab Allah wa itrati. I don't want to debate this topic. I don't want to question it. So let's just accept. Kitab Allah wa sunnati. The footsteps, the lifestyle, the traditions of Rasulullah, be my guest. Do what Rasulullah used to do. Pray the way that he prayed. Fast the way that he fasted. And one of the most important traditions and the sunnahs of Rasulullah is loving Abu Abdullah al Hussein. And so you, when you express affection and express love towards his perpetrators and his Killers, is that really love of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam? I remember once uh, there was this big banner and sign over the grave of Hijr ibn Uday, the ones who've been to Damascus visited uh, this great companion of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And this, this banner over his grave read that this is the grave of Hijr ibn Uday. The companion of Rasulullah, may God be pleased with him, who was killed by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, the great companion of Rasulullah, may God be pleased with him. That's a joke. If you love him, you need to be an enemy towards his enemy. One day, a companion comes to, comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He sees Rasulullah kissing Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, atuhibbuhu? Do you love your son, your grandson? He said, Inna Allah amarani bihubbih. Allah, Allah Akbar. Allah, sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah has ordered me, who? Rasulullah has commanded me to love Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam. And so, 
What does it mean that you come on the day of Ashura and you know it, you know the story. You come and express happiness and you show, you know, it's a joyous day. Yawm farahin wa surur. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah. So I ask you once again, who is the true follower of the sunnah of Rasulullah? Who can be genuinely called a sunni with its, 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 its true meaning? And tum, a hadith by the sixth imam, he says, Wallah antum ala deen Allah wa deen malaikatih. You, the followers of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim are on the, on, the, on the straight path, the religion of Allah and the religion of the angels. That's the sunnah of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Apart from that, Rasulullah appoints his rightful successors. And we have been ordered by them to come commence. I mentioned a portion of this hadith, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam, on the very first day of Muharram, he would start crying over Hussein alayhi salam, and uh, he, would, he, 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 will, he will not be seen joyous and happy. Depression will overtake Imam Musa ibn Ja'far from the first day of Muharram. From the first day of Muharram. So what about the rest of the things that we do? The Imam told us, أَتَجْلِسُونَ وَتُحَدِّثُونَ See, we have a term. We say, تَتَحَدِّثْ Another term is تُحَدِّثْ تُحَدِّثْ is someone standing up, sitting and talking, reciting. So this, the way that we are carrying and holding, and it's, it's connected to the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. A poet comes to the Imam, the Imam says, please recite over my grandfather, Imam Hussein. So out of shame and out of fear and humility, he's not able to recite. So he just starts talking and reading the, the poetry that he had towards Imam Hussein. So the Imam said, no, no, no. Start over, but recite the way that you would recite, you know, in your own town. Iqra' kama taqra'una farraq. I want you to stand up and recite with a special rhythm and a special tone and you go up, up and down and I want you to do this and so this is the sunnah of Rasulullah because what is told what is taught by the Ahlul Bayt salam, is nothing but the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ha'ula ala sunnati true sunnah of Rasulullah comes from the Ahlul Bayt salam. But they want to detach us from the Ahlul Bayt. This is what you would find in their books till this very day. I'd like to mention this brief story and inshallah we'll conclu conclude with the Musibah. Talha and Zubair, you've heard of their names. They were the ones who took the wife of the Prophet and they ignited the battle of the so-called Camel, Ma'rakat al-Jamal. Initially, you know that they were among the first people who gave their, gave their Pledge of Allegiance to Imam Ali alayhi salam. They were his companions, but then they wanted a stake from his government. He refused. They went and they wanted to overthrow the government of Imam Ali alayhi salam. But they became so... Um, they, 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 their animosity and enmity towards Imam Ali was, was unparalleled. Subhanallah. Na'udhu billah. Su'il aqibah. Where were they? What happened to them? To the extent. They wanted to send a letter to Imam Ali salam, just before the battle of Camel uh, is, is ignited or waged. They want to send someone, but they know for sure that whoever they send and Imam Ali starts talking to, to that person, that person will change position because they knew the truth is with Imam Ali salam, right? So they try to, they search among their army, which of course everyone was an enemy to Imam Ali salam. But they wanted the most, you know, the, the staunch enemy of Imam Ali. So they searched and searched until they found a person. They said that, you know, they, you fit for this. We want to send you with a letter to Imam Ali salam, But we want to give you some warnings. So once you go to Imam Ali with our letter, make sure, first of all, not to send, sit next to him. So he's going to offer you a seat next to him. Imam Ali, humble doesn't have a special chair, a special throne. He's going to sit, sit you next to you, next to him. So when he offers this, 
refuse. Why? Because he, he's going to uh, electrify you, if you like. He's going to do some magic. He uses black magic. That's what they literally said. يَسْحَرُكَ عَلِيُّ بْنُ أَبِي طالب. سلام الله عليه. See, they don't want us to follow Ahlul Bayt. They want to detach us, separate us from the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. That's why, by the way, parenthetically, the second Khalif banned, literally banned, the dissemination and carrying out the traditions of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahadith Rasulullah, he said, we don't need the traditions of Rasulullah. Stick with the Holy Quran and that's it. And it was banned all the way up to Umar ibn Abdul Aziz's era. That's half a century. It was banned. Who? The caliphs. They banned it. And so they said, if he offers the seat, make sure you don't sit next to him. One. Two. When you come inside, try to, be, try to take your distance away from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Just sit next to the door. Stay away from him. The further you go, the better. Three, he will offer water to you. They know Imam Ali's manners and akhlaq. Salamullah alayhi. They will offer food to you. Beware of touching that food and that water. However you thirsty you are, just don't touch that water. There is black magic. He said, okay. I know who Ali ibn Abi Talib is. You know, I, will, I won't be seduced by him. But they said, no, you don't understand. Imam Ali is different. Once you meet him, he will change you. He said, hell no. I'm an enemy of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I want to sever his head. They said, they said you still don't understand. You go there, and as you enter, start reciting. There is a spe special verse that they, it's, is usually... Uh, recited in order to keep the jinn and the devil away from you, especially those people who have jinn, you know, um, uh, inflicted with their disturbance and whatnot. You recite this verse. So they said, they said, as you enter and see Ali ibn Abi Talib, you become in his company, recite this verse constantly. Okay. He goes. Imam Ali, when he meets him, he says, Come sit next to me. Forget it, Ya Ali ibn Abi Talib. I've got this message. I want the reply and the response, and I want to go back. Imam Ali said, water, food? He said, nothing. I'm not thirsty, not hungry. Let's just get this done, done with. And then he starts reciting this verse. Imam Ali said, Fulan. He mentioned his name. So Talha and Zubair, they told you one, two, three, four. And they told you at the end to recite this verse. Yes? Okay, be my guest. Recite it. In fact, I will recite it with you in, in, in case you know you've got. I will recite it 70 times for you. For you. And so he gave the message. Then Imam Ali said, my response, again, one, two, three, four. So he, he started talking about his position and his stances and what Rasulullah said about him and what he did and what not. So obviously this man, he changed position. He was guided by Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali said, go back, give them the response. My letter. He said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, I'm afraid that now they will deceive me. He said, uh, you worry not, I will do dua that you will remain on the straight path. Anyway, after the battle was, uh, was waged, he was among the martyrs in Imam Ali's camp. So the idea, brothers and sisters, they want to separate us from Ali ibn Abi Talib. You've heard it. Muawiyah, he came. He said, he who loves Ali ibn Abi Talib is to be killed. He who mentions a hadith regarding Ali ibn Abi Talib gets killed. The name of Ali ibn Abi Talib is to be banned, an executive order. Who you think and you would assume is a follower of Ali ibn Abi Talib you don't have to bring it to court. You don't have to ask. Just demolish the wall, his house over his head. Kill them along with their families, along with whoever is linked to them. For 80 consecutive years, 100,000 pulpits, they would start and they would end with cursing Ali ibn Abi Talib A 100,000 pulpits for 80 years. Just imagine. Just imagine. 
And so, brothers and sisters, if we want the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, there is no other way. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah. Inshallah, we will continue in the upcoming nights. Imam Hussein alayhi salam comes to the, the grave of his grandfather. He complains to him, Jeddah, Ya Rasulullah, but I'm your grandson and they want to kill me. Who? One, two, the whole nation. They've neglected me. They've abandoned me. And now they say that you have to give the pledge of alliance and allegiance and obedience to who? Yazid ibn Muawiyah. So he comes to Rasulullah. Farhuka wa ibn farhatik. Sibtuka ya Rasulullah. I am your son. I am your grandson. They say that one, and this is again mentioned in their sources, in their books, that Rasulullah one day, I think when he was two years old, Imam Hussein, he came to the pulpit when he came back from, from where he was. He, came to, he comes to the, to the city of Medina. He comes to the mosque, ascends the pulpit. He starts crying and mentioning and telling people what's going to happen to his son. And the companions start weeping. Then he said, Woe unto you! Wayhakum! Atabkuna wa la You cry, but you do not support? You cry, but you don't help? Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, he will stand lonely on the day of Ashura calling out for help and no one is ready to help and support him. Some historians suggest that it was one million people who came to kill Imam Hussein alayhi salam. One million. As for the 30,000 mentioned in the traditions, they were the armed men, they were the troops. But they just gathered other people. They told them that if you stay in Kufa, you will most definitely get, get killed. So Imam Hussain alayhi salam comes to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I am, I am about to leave the city of Medina because it was that night that they sent a messenger from the Khalif, from Yazid, that you have to give this pledge of allegiance, you have to obey. Imam Hussain did, oh, this Imam Hussain alayhi salam refused, so he said that Medina is no more secure and I, I need to leave. So he came. And to bid his grandfather farewell. Came to say goodbye. He comes. He weeps, sheds tears. And then he takes a nap over that sacred grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he sees Rasulullah coming towards him. Traditions tell us that he saw Rasulullah رعيل من الملائكة عن يمينه ورعيل من ال من الأنبياء عن شماله. He comes with angels and with 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 prophets. صلى الله عليهم أجمعين. And he embraced his grandson. He said, ولدي حسين. ولدي حسين حبيبي حسين. إن أباك وأمك وأخاك قد اشتاقوا إلى لقائك. And it's a matter of time that you will come to me, O Hussein. You will join us in paradise, O grandson. But then Abu Abdullah al Hussein said, يا رسول الله خذني إليك لا حاجة لي إلى الرجوع إلى الدنيا. Can you not take me away? I don't want to go back to life. He said, "Waladi Hussein, inna lak darajatan lan tanalha illa bishahada." You have a unique position, you have a duty, you have a responsibility, and then you will be gifted a special place in paradise, Hussein. People will need you. They will need your guidance, Abu Abdullah. They need to embark into your ark, Hussein. You have to get killed. You have to be martyred in the way that you will be massacred on the day of Ashura. كأني بك عن قريب وأن تبين قوم يزعمون أنهم من أمتي. They claim that they follow my footsteps. They claim that they imitate my lifestyle. But they're not my nation. لا أنا لهم الله شفاعتي. وَكَأَنِّي بِكَ عَنْ قَرِيبٍ Hussein, I can foresee a day that you are lying on the sand dunes. وَأَنْتَ ضَمْآنْ لَا تُسْقَى وَأَنْتَ عَطْشَانْ لَا تُرْوَى You are thirsty, you are calling, 
and you are asking for water but no one tends to listen no one tends to reply they say on the day of Ashura Imam Hussein alayhi salam lying on the on the sand he starts to move his lips one of those troops he says that I saw Imam Hussein moving his lips as if he is invoking God's wrath, wrath over us he's doing dua over us so he says that I came close to Imam Hussein alayhi salam to see and to hear what Imam Hussein is saying and I heard him saying you're killing me but you're killing me in a state of thirsty I'm being thirsty وأمي فاطمة الزهراء أقتل ضمآنا وأبي علي المرتضى أقتل ضمآنا وجدتي خديجة الكبرى My grandfather is Rasulullah My grandmother is Khadija الكبرى The mother of the faithfuls My father is Ali ibn Abi Talib My mother is Fatimah al-Zahra alayha salam ayuqtalu dhamaanan Husaynun bi Karbala wa fi kulli uzwin min anamilihi bahru and so Imam Hussein complains and weeps this poet may God bless him a Shaykh al-Damastani he brings this story in, a, in lines of poetry ضمني عندك يا جدا في هذا الضريح علني يا جد من بلوى زماني أستريح ضاق بي يا جد من رحب الفضا كل فسيح فعسى طود الأسى يندك بين الدكتين جد صفو العيش من بعدك بالأكدار شيب وأجاب الهم رأسي قبل إبان المشيب فعلى من داخل القبر بكاء ونحيب ونداء بافتجاع يا حبيبي يا حسين أنت يا ريحانة القلب حقيق بالبلاء إنما الدنيا أعدت لبلاء نبلاء لكن الماضي قليل بالذي قد أقبلا فاتخذ درعين من حزم وعزم صارمين ستذوق الموت ظلما ضاميا في كربلاء وستبقى في ثراغها ثاويا منجدلا وكأني بلئيم الأصل شمرا قد علا صدرك الطاهر Excuse me, I won't finish this line يهوصل ويلي القبر جدا وبتحسين يودع والدمع يهمل من العين بش عنده يا ويلي وصاح صوتيا يا جد مفارجك غصبا علي he bids his grandfather farewell he goes home he tells his family he tells he tells his children brothers sisters that we need to pack up and go and leave he who wants to stay in Medina he can stay but I am leaving Medina Allama al Majlisi, this great scholar in Bihar mentions a story he says Imam Hussein had a daughter her name was Fatima she was ill Fatima al Alila. Imam Hussein was about to pack up and leave with the caravan when Fatima wakes up she is very very ill she cannot move when all of a sudden she sees his fa her father leaving her brothers his, her sisters her aunties all of her household they're all leaving she says, Father, Abba Ya Hussein, or at least this is how we can imagine the story of this daughter. Wakes up, Abba Ya Hussein, where are you leaving? How come everything, everyone is going? My sisters, my brothers, my mother, my aunties, my uncles, Abbas, everyone is leaving. Apart from me, Abba Ya Hussein, how come? 
they say that we need to take this trip the trip to the hereafter of course أنا وحيدة بهالوطن لا تخلوني عليلة والجسم من لضم بالسم ناداها الحسيان ودمعت تسيل يا بعد أهلي سفرنا درب طويل وانت عليلة وجسمك نحيل وعلى مثلك يا بويا السفر يا حرام maybe Imam Hussein was afraid that if he, if he takes her she can't make it she will die in the way no بنتاه فاطمة daughter you need to stay with the wife of the holy prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أم سلمة and we are leaving so I'm again imagining that she would say أبا يا حسين at least leave one with me of my family can you not leave أبا الفضل العباس with me in مدينة how can Abbas leave Hussein? Abbas has a duty on the day of Ashura. Abbas needs to give his hands, his eyes, his head towards Abu Abdullah, his cause. No, no, Abbas needs to come with, along with us. Abba, ya Hussein, can you not leave Ali al Akbar with me? No, Ali al Akbar also needs to sacrifice for his father, Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Abba, ya Hussein, how about my sisters? I've got Sukaina. I've got Ruqayya, Subhanallah, Imam Hussein has three daughters, one needs to stay in Medina, one needs to come to Karbala, and one needs to stay in, in Asham, in Damascus, Ruqayya, Salamullahi alayha, no, they all need to come along. Abba Ya Hussein, there is one member of the family that I cannot imagine, imagine having a role on that day. Can you leave him with me? I see him, he sees me. Abdullah al -Radhi. He can't do much, Abba Ya Hussein. Leave Abdullah, this six month old baby. Leave him with me. I will take care of him, Abba Ya Hussein. Khallu Abdullah ili wa ana ila. Khallu Abdullah ili. قلبي خايف يا هلي من كربلاء قلبي خايف يا هلي من حرملاء but Abdullah needs to come along he has a, a duty he needs to give his throat to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يا بقلب خايف يا هل من حرم لما they start moving and she bids them farewell she as if she is crawling and coming towards that caravan that she will perhaps miss most of them and will never get to see them again <laughs> But I will, I will try to give aid. I will try to help you, Abba Abdullah. I know that I am ill. But I will try my best, Hussein. اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك ونقسم عليك بأحب الخلق إليك بالحسين الوجيه وجده وأبيه وأمه وأخيه والتسعة المعصومين من ذريته وبنيه إلى غنا صل على محمد وآل محمد The first dua إلى غنا عجل وليك الفرج I do this du'a and you say from your 
from the bottom of your heart إلهي آمين إلهنا عجل وليك الفرج إلهنا عجل وليك الفرج إلهنا عجل وليك الفرج أرنا الطلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة أكحل ناظرنا بنظرة منا إلي إلهنا بالحسين اشف كل مريض فك كل أسير أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين أحينا حياة محمد وآل محمد أمتنا ممات محمد وآل محمد لا تفرق بيننا وذريتنا وبين آل محمد طرفة عين أبدا وإلى أرواح موت المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما موت هذا الجام العلماء الشهداء خدمة أبي عبد الله من لم يذكرهم ذاكر من المؤمنين والمؤمنات إلى أرواحهم نهدي لهم ثواب الفاتحة قبلها صلوات